off the production line for Supernatural Strength merchandise is the iconic Deep, Deep, Deep Inside shirt. Ladies and gents, get out there and get your merch. Link's in the description, copy and paste it into your browser. Feel the love, motherfuckers. Just a point on professionalism, lads, before we start things off. Ray, I can obviously see that your hair is at full full length there, son, which means you, you're not you've not got any headphones on yet. No, I, I don't need the bell. Have you upspec? Yeah. What have you done? How have you done this? It's friggin' awesome. This is as professional as I've ever seen, mate. It's like <laughs> Brad Cook's been round your place and sorted it out. You know, groomed the cats. <laughs> Your yeah. voice of arm wrestling signs perfectly in line, perfectly the right way around, which I've got to say, lads, none of us spotted the other week. Did you see all the comments? Oi, Ray, you signed the wrong way around. I swear to God, I did not spot that. <laughs> Seriously. No, I think, I think that's an anomaly too, because I, I swear it wasn't backwards. I didn't spot it. Usually you can see it, but, you know, I wasn't just taking a piss and not telling you. I genuinely didn't see it. Now, for fans of the show, we're going to start things off with the... Uh, the th the, the, we've got a little bit of there's, there's a there's a thing in our show where fans come back for certain features, and I feel like Paul Lynn rattling a massive cup is something that has missed from this show since he's tuned his microphone down. There you go, starting there it go. off. Hey, just while we're on the white talk, I had one of your mates on here last night. Mate was speaking very highly of you. Jason Merlo was on the show. Oh, nice. I'm glad Deep you got him over finally. Yeah, yeah. I rate Jason Merlo. He's uh... a... <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's almost as strong as Lachlan. Is this the longest running show on YouTube within the sport of arm wrestling? Like, has anyone been this consistent? Surely others have. I don't know if anyone's been this consistent. Really? Crossfire? I don't know. Did they make no, 50? No, no. no, they haven't made 56. No, no way. What about, really? what about uh, Beauty and the Beast with Gary and Travis? They might have no. they, they did that many episodes, but they didn't we do are, it over the span of time. What I remember, we did the first show on April. I think it was April 9 or something like that. So, because we did some specials, this is why it's 56, it's already 56 weeks of the year, you know. So, we, we kind of already... <laughs> yeah, we've done a few big weekenders and stuff like that, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specials, you know. Yes, but this we're, we're probably going to do a special. One of these that we record tonight's probably going to be a special. Yeah. Realistically. Anyway, let's get this thing going. I'll do it professionally. Check this. A bit of a slip up last week. I'm just gonna wash it over. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fix show 56, arguably the longest running show ever <laughs> in the sport of professional arm wrestling. And in true Ryan Bowen style, even if that's not true, <laughs> we don't give a fuck. <laughs> We're gonna you claim know. it. Even if it's not true, it is true. It is true. We don't care. We're going to claim we it make, anyway. we, we, we make it true. Yeah, it may be true. We need to check that out. Somebody come on in the comments who's like a stato on arm wrestling shows and tell us if that's true, because I have no friggin' idea. But if it is, lovely darts. Now, do you think the world's gone matter what? Everybody's falling out. Friggin' <laughs> Meghan Markle and the British monarchy. Ryan <laughs> Bowen and fucking everyone. <laughs> Devon and Engin. D Devin mean, and everyone. Me, me, Devin and Engins. <laughs> level. I, mean, I just want to. I just want to give official statement from the fix that we would love to have super match. Our manager gonna contact Devin, and we're gonna do it very soon. 
And um, yeah, we all will have some one super match with all of us. With that, <laughs> that's yeah, I, I believe that's funny. our official statement. Yeah. And if he and if he, do, and if he doesn't accept the match with us, he's a coward. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right he is. Personally, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on record as being the coward of the fix. That I'm not necessarily bothered about a match with uh, Devon because I'm holding out for the big money. I want to challenge Ryan Bowen for 125 mm. grand because <laughs> he might be able to raise that money, and I do not care if I win, lose, or draw. For 125 grand, <laughs> I'm holding anyone. That's where the money's at. Forget this Dubai rubbish. 125 grand. What do you reckon, Ryan? Raisable, doable. Yeah. Are we are we bear fighting? And that's what you mentioned last time. Was that yeah, bears, I, will, didn't you? I will wrestle a bear, but that won't <laughs> bother me. Let me tell you, it's a lot of money. But joking aside for a moment, what's going on? How did we get here? Two weeks ago we were calm. Three weeks ago I had both these guys as guests, resident co-hosts mm. on the bloody in the presence of greatness show. It's like if Paul Lynn and Ray started scrapping next week. And <laughs> <laughs> Wolf wouldn't come on the show. What the fuck? And it started about King's move. And, you know, the whole desperation move and all that rubbish. I've got to say, though, Statue of Liberty thing from Engin. Inspirational. That was ace. Mm. And it's good. That's a good line. It's interesting. I don't, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because it seems playful. Even coming from Engin, he, he, he started out yeah, happily taking little shots at Devon and uh, making funny videos about the desperation uh, move, as he calls it, and um, it all seemed good. But uh, yeah, it's just fired up. It's fired up, big time. To now, the friendship of twenty years is done. The the blocks in place. Not gonna, not gonna see him again. Like it's, it's going crazy. I don't know if Engin has really come to to know what this thing is, called the internet is yet. But um, man, it's, it's it's giving us content creators something to talk about. That's for sure. Yeah, the, the the cruel thing about all of this is, though, that Engin is so uh, purist passionate. You know what I mean? He's like, he's purely passionate. He's not kidding. And there's a cultural difference there in terms of some of the things that um, Devon says about Engin. If you were to say, if I, if I walked into Paul Lynn's house with his wife there, right, in America, and I said, ah, you chihuahua, and gave him a bit... I'm sure Paul will be like, you know, it's not like the worst thing in the world. He's, you know, he's just have another beer and crack on. But if you say that to a Turk, there can be an issue there because there's a cultural difference. And Engin's really upset by that. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not sure whether Devon actually appreciates how upset Engin is. I really don't. I don't yeah. I'm not sure. He's not like kind of joking. You know what the I mean? Funny, the funny part about that is my wife is Lebanese. If you came to our house and called me a chihuahua, I'd laugh and she'd probably fight you. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. So, you know, That's if I've got naught to sell, if I go to the White Oaks house and I don't want my penis cut off, <laughs> no chihuahua guys. Don't put your penis in acid, Neil. Don't put it in acid. Me got, yeah. I don't need it. true. Go. True story. Go back to episode 55. Yeah. yeah. 55, yeah. So, yeah. it's got to be, somehow we've got to heal this rift, you know. Because, yeah. if for no better reason, that they're both guests on In the Presence of Greatness. You know. <laughs> I actually like both men. Uh, I think that Devon is playing, and I think that Engin is not. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I think Devon does appreciate the... Or I think Devin would be aware of the cultural differences. I just don't think Devin's willing to change who, who he is. I, I, I didn't see anything vicious in any way, shape, or form knowing the context of Devin's culture. So there was... So uh, it goes two ways. Yeah, Devin's got to be gentle when it, when it, if, if it gets real serious, which it kind of is, and he probably would be uh, gentle in the background privately but with Engin. But Engin's also got to take that that realization that the cultural context of everything Devin's saying is nothing vicious. It's just, just casual Devin being Devin. And yeah, yeah no, no, nothing to I've it. Sp- no. I've spoken to both men, uh, and I've said to Engin, look, Engin, I know he's really upset you, dude, but I promise you he's playing. He's not really wound, you know, he's, there's nothing really, uh, malicious in there. He's mucking about. Yeah. For, for, for Devin, it's, it's, he's playing. He's having fun. He's, 
chanted his arm and he's he'd sort of gone into his pre-match banter routine. If you look back at, at, at all Devon's recent matches, you know, the Matt Mass thing with crack all the time, you know, all the, all the stuff, and they did the polar bear thing. Michael's probably going to come under it. I mean, now that he's agreed this match with Michael and that's happening, I know at the moment mm. it's all going to be friendly stakes, but how long do you give it, seriously? I mean, what, two, three mm. weeks, it starts to get into it, and something will get said and they'll be off. Because yeah. Michael's a, a passionate, sensitive guy. And Devon will try every, any and every means necessary to sort of get into his head and to throw him off his game. What he's going to do, you know? It's I not part, part of it might be cultural, like you said, Neil. But I think part of it really is just personality based. Um, and you know, it, it, Angan almost reminds me a lot of like what, what Rob Vision has talked about where mm-hmm. like, you know, he, he goes off of Facebook, you know, he says, I, I'm done with this because he, Rob, Rob can't let things go. A lot like Devin, he's so passionate about things that he gets emotionally invested in an argument or something like that to the point where it can affect his life negatively. And I see that similarity with, with Angan. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I mean, Rob really identifies it. You know, he talks about the, the internet being like a dark, dark place. And the reality of it is if you let it get to you, um, I think that that's what will happen. I really think it's let, it may be some, somewhat cultural just because Angan's a serious guy. But um, he, clearly... he feels genuinely disrespected, right? And he, right. he's taking the comments from from Devon as genuine disrespectful right. comments. Where I don't really believe that Devon's that deeply thinking about it. I think he's just they're, they're sort of throwaway lines. He right. doesn't really believe that Engin was below the table in a king's move. He believes that by doing that, it'll really piss off Engin. He's right. just trolling. He's just yeah. trolling. I, what, what I don't like about all this situation is because I believe they were such a good pals, you know. Miscommunication. They, they like they talked on something and then Devon said something on a video and I don't know if they talked about it, but it doesn't look like they talked about it. Like you know, I, like the match Engin versus Devon. However, would happen. I would love to see it, and uh, I said it before to be a part of Armistice history. We we had that match at some point. We had that match. Doesn't matter how it ended. It's good. But mm-hmm. miscommunication between two guys. It's kind of weird. I I don't know. You know, I, I I have not talked with either of them, so I don't know in and out. But it looks like it's a huge miscommunication. Just like you know. I didn't say this to you and you didn't tell. Like, if I would post something on Facebook, you respond me on Instagram and Paul making video on YouTube and Ryan is on Twitter. And, yes. you know, or, that, that's how slightly I slightly different lane. Yeah. Um, plus, uh, yeah, Engin is very, uh, Engin gets very upset. He takes everything to the heart and, you know, we, we, we have seen it and, uh, uh, most of the time, rightly so, but, uh, Devon is trolling as well, and I, I see kind of mean Devon right now. He sees kind of mean, you know, the army of trolls. Everyone, like, have you read your comments lately? You know, well, my oh, comments. Oh, uh, oh man, the, the, the troll the army, army thing troll. popped up. There's like a hundred, there's a hundred of them. There's a hundred different aliases. Yeah. I've seen the full list. Phenomenal. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, 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 sweet child of mine, where's the full list? I, uh, one of my comments on a video today, uh, the full list, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I've seen all these names at different times. Like, this is yeah. this is amazing." But yeah. Anyway, yeah. The, the the thing that I would I would I I I hoped Engin was able to be advised, or someone would just prompt him, and or he would see it eventually. Was that um that De- because Engin made ref- reference to Devon's PR machine. And when Engin was kind of pissed off, he said that Devin's just a PR machine protected by WAL, and uh, he's just, he, 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 he's not a real arm wrestler using the the desperation moves. And, and, and Engin getting angry and upset in that fashion made comments like that. But I, I hope that Engin eventually sees that the PR machine, like for a match between Devin and Engin, if it were to happen, that PR machine is is a great thing for for helping the sport grow, for putting even money in Engen's pocket uh, for for that match, and 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 that's the baseline, that's the ground floor when I when I think of Devin's intent on his trolling and his and his his platform and whenever he's hyping a match up or even a potential match or a call out, 
Um, there's, I think Devin's one of the nicest people I've ever, ever known. Certainly one of the most selfless in terms of his time and energy. And I would never in a million years think anything else other than that he's just building a story. So I hope Engen sees that. Well, the funny thing is, last night I spoke briefly to uh, to Devin about, about other stuff as well, but basically he said on there, I said, look, you know, obviously Engen's not joking. He's really, really upset by this. And Devin just said, look, mate, I, I'll have a, I, if you want to have a live call with him, I'll have a live call with him and straighten it out. He, he said that to me last night. Devin said that last night. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. actually think that, that, that Engin would be up for that. If he is, ace, you know. Mm. But um, I don't think he would be up for that. But let's just, you know, let's keep let's keep it real. Let's and move it on to arm wrestling for a minute. Because a match between Engin and Devon, I'm not overly excited by. Let it be said, however, that Engin Terzi looked iron mm-hmm. the other day in <laughs> yeah, Turkey. And huge. Yeah. His freaking yeah. forearms were massive. Yeah. Massive. When he was on the practice table, there was a shot of his forearm, and I thought, "Good Lord, God, his forearm was massive." Did, did, did I did I hear him say he was ninety five kilos? Yeah. That I don't know. <laughs> yep. I know he's yeah. been upwards of that. He's been over that, but he he didn't look like you know. Obviously, he's carrying a bit of weight. He's forty seven years old, uh, mm-hmm. coming up forty eight years old. But but he's clearly working hard because his forearm was massive. And he's, yeah, I mean, I'm not looked, saying, Viral Dobrin is no bum. And he beat Viral with ease. Yeah. You know, so, Devon, though? I don't know. Devon's mm-hmm. a big boy. Yeah, but yeah, if, De- if Devon De- cuts down to 100, who's an advantage, who's a disadvantage, for sure? Well, um, Engin could possibly pin Devon in that first surge. I think that in the strap, like, if you look at the way... If you look at the way Devin beat John Brzezank in that first round of their their uh, their semi final in the WAL, I could see the match looking very similar to that. I could see it out of straps, um, Engen bossing and Devin slipping and going, I ain't holding on to that stuff. And but then in the strap, that brakes get put on and sucked back in. And yeah, I think it'd be very similar to Devin and John. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I think Makarov is a, a a better match. Personally, I like mm-hmm. that much better. And I also think from, from Engin's legacy, forget the whole right. internet trolling and argument rubbish and all like that, because I'm hoping that's just a flash in the pan and the lads get that, that move, move past that pretty quick, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but for Engin, Engin's talking about retiring from the sport. The guy's had an incredible career. He's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be for him... Very, if he's genuinely talking, if he genuinely does retire, which I personally hope he doesn't, but if he did, it'd be a hell of a legacy cap if he could go out beating Arthur, because Arthur, in or around that weight class, is arguably the man. You know, he's rock strong, and he's recognised as such. So, and obviously, there wouldn't be the same kind of aftermath and stuff like that that a match with Devon potentially yields, because Devon even if for nothing more than just, you know, to entertain the troll army, he's clearly going to hit the frigging kings, isn't he? At some point in there, he's going to try and hit the kings on, on Engin, <laughs> just so they get the shot. If nothing else, yeah. he would yeah. do that. I, he would do that, just to yeah. be funny. Yep. Yeah. You know? And yeah, yeah. The, the, the lead up for, for Engin wouldn't be good either. You know, everything, like you said, Devin's like pre-match trolling and everything. I mean, if, if this is a glimpse into what that match would be, you know, for two months leading up to it, I, I don't, I don't think that that's good. Period. No. And, and who, who really wants to see a hundred kilogram uh, Devin anyway? He he clearly yeah. wants to stay at the supers and, and challenge the big boys. We don't want to see him down at two twenty again. I, I've got to yeah. agree with you, mate. I've got to agree with you. I I I'm more interested in that whole, not just Devin. Devin's a key player within it. Yeah. But I'm more I'm more interested in that whole playing out in the super heavyweight category. And I don't think, with the greatest of respect, that those lower weight classes need Devon's involvement. Exactly. There's so much talent in there already. Tons yeah. of it. Uh, there's well, a glut of mega strong pullers. So do we need Devon there? Not really. Well, once you truly got, I, I think I heard Travis say it, like once you truly go up to supers and commit to be like, like elite there, you don't go back. You know, mm-hmm. when you're in the open weight category, you don't come back. 
unless there's serious money on the line. So, you know, if Devin, Devin's going to stay where, you know, where his goals are, it doesn't make any sense for him to, I mean, if you really put yourself in Devin's shoes, why would you ever do that match other than for sheer spite and just kind of trolling, you know? Yeah. yeah, there's not going to be the same money in it, and there's not going to be. I mean, obviously, the opportunity and the, 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 the just the gravitas of the match with Michael is going to be the focus for now, yeah. uh, and we'll obviously come on to that today uh, in a big way. But before we before we do transition, can I just say I, I wish I know Engin Terzi's got his YouTube channel now, and it's it's, it's getting pretty good traction because of all this. But I think and we'll Engin, put a link in the description, Ryan, as well, just to give it, give it I, another push. I, 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 I love that YouTube will benefit everyone's personality style. And I actually think that Engin's truly offended, truly upset, truly raw Hewish. and emotional uh, personality would be one of the most entertaining channels ever. I, if, he, if he gave his genuine pissed off comments about stuff, man, I'd watch that. That'd be one of the first videos I'd watch. Hey, let, no. let's just put no finer cap on it, right? How many times are you as busy as hell? I might finish your show and it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm finishing shows and somebody will message you, okay? And mm. you want to answer a question about pronation and wrist and flex, all these things, okay? <laughs> but you've just, you're absolutely ruined. You haven't seen your family. You've been, you started doing YouTube shows at 7 o'clock and it's 11 o'clock and you are dumb, you know, and you mm. get three or four messages on that line. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just too exhausted to be typing away on this. I'm knackered. I've got editing to do. I've got stuff like this. I'm working a full day. All these things. Engin doesn't give a fuck. Engin <laughs> will sit up till 4 a.m. and yeah. will literally engage everybody on that combat. He will. <laughs> he'll piss you off. At the end of it, you'll be going, okay, enough, bro. <laughs> I've had enough. Of, and he will still be pointing out really valid stuff. Yeah. That thing. <laughs> Engin is yeah. the man mm. when it comes to obsessed with arm. Nobody's obsessed with arm wrestling like he is. Right. Yeah. So uh, along that line, I mean, like you said about like catching up on all the YouTube videos, because I go down a rabbit hole all the time. This is honestly the first time, like, in my journey in arm wrestling where I legitimately cannot keep up with what's going on. So there's probably going to be a topic <laughs> that comes up on this show that I don't know anything about because I am on overload. And I can't log the hours to watch all the videos. It's awesome. Like, the spike in content is crazy. I mean, there's channels yeah. popping up everywhere. It seems like everybody's com communicating through YouTube channels now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I can't I can't log the time. Oh, How good is this? it? Like, Matt, Matt Musk launched his YouTube channel yeah. today in response to Emily's Gasparini. Cobra yeah, Rose is now putting out... Thoughtful oh, videos about stuff. Like I'm like, oh man, this is freaking awesome. Yeah, Cobra, this is Cobra's this is what we wanted. Be... wanted. This is what we wanted. Yeah. You know, this really, this really, like, like oh man, the whole the this, whole sport. This, 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 this is what will make arm wrestling big. It's not just three channels talking about stuff and people listening. Yeah. No, it's everyone. 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 Yeah, one of my one yeah. of my local guys, John Anthony, called me, and he, he's he's another one. Like he's super obsessed, and uh, you know he watches everything. And he was like, man, I can't. My wife's gonna kill me. I'm trying to watch everything, and I and I'm not getting anything done at the house. <laughs> like basically, like we both were like, oh, yeah, man, I can't keep up. We need to figure out. We need to figure out. You watch these videos. I watch these videos, and let's talk about it so we get the information. <laughs> hey, I yeah. kid you not. The other day, right? I'm letting bed. This is like quarter to midnight, and I'm in bed, and uh, I've got my Bluetooth headphones in, and I'm listening to show. And I I feel like I've got it turned down. You know what I mean? I've dialed it down, down, down. <laughs> but I'm listening with my eyes closed. I'm listening with my eyes closed. And it, who's that? Was listening? Oh, it was the call-in show for yeah. Arm TV. Uh, Uncle John, Jason yeah. Merlo was on there. Burgoyne was on there. Guys, if you haven't checked that out, get yourself yeah, over, fun. check it out. I'm listening to it. And I, you know how you're suddenly aware? And I'm thinking, okay. My bedroom may be haunted, you know, but then I'm like, oh, no, the bed is depressed at either side. And for a little moment there, I thought, well, 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 it's on. No, no, my loves. It wasn't on. I opened my <laughs> eyes and my missus is like this. She's got the face. She looked like Engin on a Devon call. She was pissed. <laughs> and she goes into my eyes and she's saying, you turn that Bluetooth headset off or I will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Whatever it's got to. No, I don't know. It, 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 there's a there's a there's a werewolf sensitivity of hearing when we're from from uh, from wives and partners at at four a.m. in the morning when you when you when you're playing chess with Devon via friggin' Zoom or something like that. Oh, I, I, you whisper it doesn't work. Doesn't doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna happen, is it? That's that's so funny because I do the same thing to to, to try and be conspicuous. I put one Bluetooth headphone in and, and I leave the other one out, and then my wife will talk to me about something. And I'm like, no, I can't hear her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you have a headphone in? <laughs> what are you doing? It's six. It's not on. It's not on. It's not on. It's not you on. Can't, you it can't out. get enough in though. And then I'll get messages. Yeah. Have you heard this? Have you seen this? Have you? And you're like, no. I, you know, it's ridiculous. Absolutely <laughs> off the scale, but as Ray says, it's got to be positive. Yep. Mm. And well, the most ironic have... thing is, is there's no there's no real arm wrestling going on. I mean, we had that. I mean, since the last time we did the show, the only thing that really has happened is that that event in um, in Turkey. Turkey. Yeah. And that's not even necessarily the mm. biggest mm. topic right now. No. Crazy. Which is ridiculous. Sadly, sadly. Well, well, there. sadly. Right. <laughs> yeah, sadly. exactly. It's like sadly because you had. A room full of absolute weirdos. Killers. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You got you got pretty much Yeah, pretty much every weight class from one fifty four up was represented by at least one savage. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you got the opportunity to see guys that are those outlying guys, you know I mean uh Chiprianoff's one of them. Because Chiprianoff has been based in the UK for a number of years. Um, and those who haven't seen Andrea Lightning, Chiprianov, are near more. Ridiculously fast, ridiculously strong. Romanian national champion many times over. He's now based over in Turkey, training with uh, the Enigma. Uh, and obviously that's benefiting him. Rounded his game out. But how strong did he look? Incredible. He, he looks... He, that, that was one of the match that wasn't that interesting to watch. Yeah, because, really yeah. boring. Yeah, it was it, it, almost every other match was really interesting to watch. It was like that wasn't he was yeah. that dominant. Yeah, it was like watching when I was a kid. That was into snooker. Okay, now you had snooker players and you had snooker players, and we had a couple of players at that time. One was called Jimmy White. You called him Jimmy the Whirlwind White. There's another guy called Eric. He's always he had to be named after after some kind of like you know strong wind to be good at snooker. So he was like Alex Hurricane Higgins and Jimmy Whirlwind White is amazing. So they were like exciting players because they go for shots and things like that. And then you had another two players at that time and then just after. One of them was called Steve Davis and the other one was called Stephen Henry. And those, they were like basically invincible at that time. Like you couldn't, nobody beat them. And they were so good. It made every, every match they played was boring as hell. Because they were just exceptional at it. And the downside of arm wrestling as a sport is, on occasion, it can get like that. If you've got a guy that's so dominant in a match, you lose all the... You need it to be a scrap. You need it to be the Bojadar match. Where it's that visceral, hanging on death match, you know. Uh, if it's... if it's, I, I'm, I'm impressed by a flash pin. But you can't watch many of them. You know? Yeah. Am I alone in this thought, or do you agree with me? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be yeah. enjoying um, a, at least a little bit um, during COVID, not taking all the heat for match setups. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that just, that just kind of highlights like when everybody, everybody's fussing about, you know, whoever from their town should be on WAL. But uh, the idea of setting up a good match that's actually going to be fun to watch. I know we've talked before about that, but you got to be enjoying this stint a little bit, not having the stress of. 20 people attacking you based Man, on that setup. <laughs> people don't know the critical importance. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you how bad, right? Uh, worst experience of my life. Because you've got to remember, when you're paying a, a professional camera crew, you're investing a lot of money. Particularly if it's a TV quality camera, you know what I mean? Four-man crew. Mm -hmm. So... Way, way, way back, we have the match between Devon Larratt and, and Travis Bajan. And you pay these guys by the hour, literally, okay? So the experience on, some, on the Saturday of the right arm match is so terrible 
that I stand down the camera crew on Sunday to the left. I say, ah, no, not fit. You know, because you're looking at a couple of thousand quid to film it. And I'm like, yep. oh, that. Because the guys from Euro, Sylvie from Eurosports there, she's seen the right arm matches. She's like, like that. She ain't even, she don't want to see the edit. She's like, that is not going on the channel. There is no way that we're putting that on. And we had a film, uh, film crew over there, an additional film crew filming for, uh, uh, documentary called Superhuman Super Strong, which Travis was being featured in. I put him on to Travis because of his charisma and so on. Talk about your old time backfires. It's the most unentertaining match in the history of the world. And so the Sunday comes with the left arm. And I'm like, yeah, forget the camera crew for this. Because we didn't have many banging left arm matches on in the afternoon. So I just stood them down. I had to cut my losses. So I'm like, yeah, yeah you go home, guys. I filmed like three uh, in the morning and then just let them go. So I saved myself a few thousand pounds on, on camera. And it, well, it was actually a much better match in many ways. Uh, but we stood the cameras down. We didn't have all the cameras from different angles. And that's the kind of level it gets to, you know. Matchmaking yep. is important on so many levels. Because if you are something like the WAL, you cannot afford to show up and have that card not deliver. Can you imagine how disastrous? It's like UFC. If they have a yeah. night of matches where every match is a dead duck, it's yeah. really bad, you know. And that's yeah. where sometimes you've got to try and balance that card. And you've got to have that as your primary consideration. That's why I love Rhoda Hoagland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he's never Probably in a match, anyway. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So apart from when he faces yeah. Rolly Ray. <laughs> hey, flash pins are interesting at some point. Yeah. Hard and hard and you're open. When is it, Ray? Give it a plug, son. Should be August. It should, should be, be August. August. Yeah. You can see uh-huh. this baby-faced assassin <laughs> go headlong into relentless. Yeah. Is it right, right arm left or just yeah, yeah, yeah. right arm left arm, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. More bang for your buck in Norway. What are the other big matches that are on there? Because you've got a couple of... We we have um, Vlad facing... Uh, I, for, I forgot the name of, of the guy he's... He's living in Norway, but he's from Bulgaria at some point. Very good armor slayer, 110 kilos. Uh, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Um, then some, some local guys versus uh, Kaspers Graves, Marats Priede. Uh, and we'll see. Yeah, uh, Engin John will be there. I will bring Giannis. So <laughs> it should be a big event. If it, <laughs> is Giannis pulling? No, 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 no. Giannis is just coming. But well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Mm. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, big big news. The hope around Michael Todd, Levan Sagan Ashley is officially in the history books, but we now know that Devin Larratt will face Monster Mike again. Are you excited? Not so excited? What's the barometer? Where's everybody at? We'll start with the orc. I mean it's I, like it's not the match that we wanted to see, right? But it is kind of the WAL match that we wanted to see. So, I, I mean, I'm excited for sure. <clears throat> I spoke to Michael the other day, and uh, it looks like I might be traveling out to work with him a little bit. He's got – he's, like, tra- he's going to, like, travel the country and, and train with people. So mm-hmm. he's got, like, a big plan. There's going to be a lot of social media around what he's doing, and I'm sure Devin's going to do the exact same. So it's definitely going to be – I mean, it's already been a spark of energy in the community. So, I mean, that for sure is positive. I think I don't know all the details, Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't want to say too much because I don't know. But supposedly it's going to be for a very large sum of money. Like we're talking like the most amount of money, like officially in history type thing. So I I think any instance, and I also don't know the absolute details about um, WAL's affiliation, but I do know that their logo's on it and that they've blessed it, I believe. So I don't know how the pay-per-view and everything's going to work. I'm really interested to see how the format, how everything plays out. And if, you know, the thing that Ryan's been talking about, like the arm wrestlers creating their own, you know, revenue, creating their own matches, funding it themselves through through hype generation and things. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested to see that model put to the test. And I don't think that there's there's two other arm wrestlers that can do it better. So, I mean, this is really the beta test for potentially something that, 
and it, it's kind of interesting because if this if this takes off, um, guys like Devin and Michael may never go back to a league. Which I mean, I'm I'm kind of bittersweet about that. I don't I don't know what I think completely because I do like the idea of leagues and everything, but I also like the idea of freedom. So they will go they will go back to a league. It'll just be that the leagues will evolve their 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 negotiations with them, and uh, it'll be event. It might be an event based contract as opposed to a five year based contract. That's all. Right. There's, there's no there's no way that the leagues wouldn't want them, and there's no way the athletes wouldn't want the leagues either. They just want want to be able to do both. I think they've got to coexist, haven't they? And they yeah. should coexist for the benefit of the sport. There's no other sports at any level where we wouldn't be big here events there. Leagues. No, here. and you, and there, you, there you, you just hold it back. No, no. Yeah, no. we need the leagues. We need the leagues for organization. We need the leagues for PR. We need the leagues for quality video. We need the leagues for uh, sponsor generation. We need the leagues for organization. Like we need. There's a lot of rationale behind needing the leagues. Um, but I think what, what Ryan's saying is, is, you know, if we can tame down the contracts a little bit and figure out how to make it mutually beneficial, I think it could be a better thing. But I, I'm just really interested to see what the actual effect is. I mean, like you say, the, the, the promotion of the athletes and so many things, there's yeah. so many guys in so many countries, uh, the leagues make stars of people and it's ingrained in your mind. I mean, you know, the, like you say, the, 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 there's a lot of good pullers pulling at tournaments like the one we just saw in Bulgaria, which you couldn't have Turkey. got more of a line in, in, in uh, Bulgaria, in Turkey, excuse me, but you, you couldn't have got more of a, a star-studded lineup. Um, but a lot of the pizzazz that goes around with it, the pre-marketing that goes around with it, you don't see in that kind of event. I mean, Hard Anger Open that, that we we're talking about a moment ago, you've got Vlad the Destroyer, that, but nobody's. You know, Vlad the Destroyer's got that hype behind him, but you imagine we're, we're, what kind of hype he'd have behind him in one of the big leagues, you know? Right. Uh, I'm right. still trying to work out who Ray's on about his pulling. He's a 110 guy, and he's based in... It's not Lashazar Savchev, is it? Somebody like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, he's really serious, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Lashazar's a bad mother fluffer. Yeah. yeah, he used to be... Uh, I didn't know he was in Norway, though. Amazing. Right, okay, okay. When he said Bulgarian 110, I thought, I'm trying to think who it was. So, yeah, nice. But, uh, yeah, no, that, the, the point I'm making there is those star-studded events, even the ones that are getting grounded, so TAL and that kind of thing, if you look at the measure of promotion with something like that and the measure of promotion when you would see from the PAL or the WAL, the chalk and cheese, yeah. you know. And Paul makes a good point in in that um, there's sort of that 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 call for like a revolution and uh, the arm wrestlers need to do it themselves out there. And I think it's important that we try to put the brakes on that a little bit and have a reality check and look at what the leagues bring to things. Because I mean, look at the PAL for example, maybe the best tables in the world, equipment, training equipment, Ryan's like. <laughs> hey, okay, they're good tables, exceptional. Yeah. Tables, right? I'm not yeah. picking any fight. Yeah. I'm not picking any fight. Hey, handles, equipment, training equipment, you name it, fabulous quality stuff comes out of the professional arm wrestling league, in my opinion. World class kit. That is all important. It helps a great deal. I'm not saying that, that you know, other. Suppliers aren't, aren't out there, but it's some good stuff. If you look at the um, the WAL, the entertainment factor, yeah. the quality that you get from those matches, the buzz. You think about it when the cards were going on for the World Arm Wrestling League. There was a massive yeah. amount of buzz in the sport. Yeah, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, that's the thing. Is, it's the hard thing is they will they will learn to coexist. Uh, we're just we're just in a uh, an adjustment period where. Uh, ultimately, uh, money determines a lot in, in this world, obviously, and it's just it's, it's great to see that more money is becoming available everywhere. To be honest, and it's just going you know, to take a little bit of time for the organisations and the athletes to to get a feel for that balance and uh, adjust appropriately. I think the leagues will, as you've said, will always have a greater influence in 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 the big marketing impact and the professional image of, of the sport. They will always be leading the charge in that way, and and, and they will. Uh, always have more command of third-party sponsors than any individual athlete will ever achieve. Um, but 
given that individual athletes now have a, an ability to make a considerable amount of money themselves through their own promotions, um, leagues just need to be aware of that. They need to uh, give consideration to that when they are dealing with their athletes, and they will. I have no doubt they will. It's just that this has kind of been sprung on the leagues in the last 18 months. Um, they didn't see it coming. Uh, COVID forced us all away from the leagues for a moment, and we've all jumped in on YouTube, and, and it's great um, to see that. And I have no doubt WALPAL, they'll all adjust and it'll, it'll all work out. Um, and the sport's growing. The, as, as Devin has said many times, uh, all, all ships rise with the tide. And at the moment, the tide is rising on the sport. So uh, we'll be good. Yeah. Uh, so how I look at all this is um, we, we kind of need everything, but j- just to look at a situation. So when, like, for smash to happen, whatever money it is. So they say it's considerable amount of money, blah, blah, blah. So who is paying that money? If you have a sponsor, that just means someone gave you the money to arm wrestle. But if that money would come from pay-per-view buys or something like that, that would mean first we need to develop sport to be so interested that this many people buy pay-per-view that it's, how to say, reusable <laughs> again. Because we have seen this time and after time again where people will come, invest their money, like they will, oh, this didn't work out how I planned, and they will leave. Promotions come and go. Big money tournaments come and go. To sustain things, we need leagues. Now it's coming in that uh, every athlete is a brand, so every athlete has their thousand fans that follow him that want to see him pull so we have a league of 20 of these people at least 20,000 people want to see and it's rentable so in in my eyes making these matches where it's big money but no one is actually paying for that match is kind of a little bit ridiculous because it will just end you know if it, not sustainable there, there, not sustainable yeah. sorry I was looking for that word yeah uh, like like PL and everyone's giving trash to Igor. I'm like, you guys don't understand what he has done for the sport. How much of his own money he has invested, basically with no return, just for the love of the sport. To say he's businessman and everything else, like looking at how they make the events, you know, they need to generate so much money for it to be profitable. And they just, they basically just all the time, they, they like, Igor told me they're catching up, and he felt that very soon, finally, he would not need to invest any of his own money for that. You know, the sponsors and everything would pay for it. But before that, it's catching up, and it's love for the sport. And these people that will come in, and they will give, like, $50,000 match, boom, from here. Where did that money come from? It just got there. No one invested in it. No one's looking at it. And it ends, and it's gone. This is where we need leagues. Leagues keep consistency, you know, consistency with uh, viewers and consistency with athletes. If athletes creating their own brands, talking, they have more following, their bigger impact, this is where the monetary value of matches go up. In my opinion, just make like making these big matches, like 10,000 match, uh, Hermes Gasparini versus my, my manager, like, it, for me, it's someone giving money to pull on table, which is ridiculous to me. But to make it so it's sustainable, time and time after again, is bigger interest, in my opinion. And this is, this is like, I'm looking, I'm like, cool, all these matches, it's kind of fun. But will arm wrestling get something back from this? Because if the money just comes and goes, there's nothing, you know? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely you, you know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want donations. We want we want to create a sustainable system. Now, yeah, it's got to be sustainable for the third-party sponsors. Like, uh, but, th- but that's when, a hundred, give, give me a quick, quick, quick second. This is where we yeah. need, if, if it's leagues, you know, leagues need to understand. Let's... This is why UFC is so great. They create storylines. Like before every event, you watch the embedded series. I'm invested in that. I'm like looking at it. I'm following the athlete, everything else. We need. This is where we need the leagues. Baby leagues need a little bit better management for a current system, which makes more sense. 
but we need leagues that will take this basically umbrella and put on us and say like you're safe here just you know we we need you to do your thing because before this year there was no youtube channels there was no presence like no one know how great the singer vitali laletin was when he sing the uh, sweet home alabama or what he was country roads or something like that that was, yeah. that was such amazing video you know and all the interactions and with levon and everyone else and this is this is what we need and this will create Arm wrestling more sustainable, not matches just coming out of... Arm wrestlers and arm wrestling is not realistic in many ways on that, though, Ray, because for many years that conversation's been out there, and for many years you're banging your head against a brick wall trying trying to get a lot of people to understand the fact that arm wrestlers want people to be stars before they are stars. They want people to be paid a lot of money before there is a market to pay them that money. And as you say, the lack of sustainability there is something which is self-perpetuating because of that that, that, that attitude. If yeah. you look at the UFC, the UFC struggled along and almost went bankrupt because of the fact they didn't have big investment. And if you knew, yeah. as, a, as I do personally, a lot of the fighters that were fighting on early cards, you'd be shocked if you knew what those guys were fighting for. Yep. We're yeah. talking, we're yeah. talking they were fighting for a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. That was the purse, the total but, purse. That was, like, like, in the low, below yeah. 10 grand in many cases. But that, like, the, the Turkey party. event. Turkey event. I don't know. I, I, I don't believe they received huge amounts of money. They love arm wrestling. They wanted to do it. If, if Engin would create his promotion and said, like, like I said, Engin makes the best matches in the world we want to see. Like the quality. Like looking at that event and event before the matches he made, like just look back at Turkey when he first faced Arthur. Like one match was, you know, kind of boring. Everyone else was war. The same here. And I'm like, this is, this is really good matchmaking from Engin, putting on, uh, athletes came in. It, but, but the problem was that in climate like this, where he was right now, uh, he didn't, he didn't want extra interest in that match so no they never tell never told where it's very realistic circumstances isn't it yeah very but but if it if it would be like 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 you did arm wars there was no contracts to my knowledge with arm war athletes or was there no, no because we didn't the, the big difference was with arm wars and the, the concept of arm wars is as follows we were looking to my purpose with arm wars was to build arm wrestling and it okay? did People came back to arm wars, not yeah. for one athlete. Because I don't want, I didn't want to event. own you, your likeness. When I said to you, all right, and okay, you're an arm wars athlete now, I own your likeness, I control you. My investment in that is, if I'm creating a situation where arm wrestling is in growth, arm wrestling is bigger, and I'm making sure that people get a fair crack of the whip, then you want to come back and you'll compete there. And I'm giving you a platform in order to build your brand and to enjoy what you do, which is unlike anything else. Imagine we're, we're six years later. Like, all your matches are happening right now. Like, like you, you, you would really think about making contracts and c- keeping these athletes a little bit closer because they have better investment, you have better investment. They're coming in with a little bit of a fan base that will look at their matches, follow their matches, be interested in their matches, their interviews, everything else. And you have this amazingly huge, uh, how to say, respected platform of arms. Once, once you've got the, the, the situation where, number one, the sport is established. Number two, there is a ju- genuine, genuine market for the sport that's identifiable and clear. Then you can start having those conversations. It's always been chicken and egg with arm wrestling to a degree. You know, and arm wrestlers don't want to sort of play the game sometimes in that. They don't want to push themselves along. Um, that I have seen different in other sports. Not always. Nothing, you know, it's not a rose garden situation. But the, the, there were certain guys who got it. Jeff Hale was a great example. And Jeff Hale started to build his own brand and he made money from it and he invested in it. And he, you know, he would get his flights and everything paid for by sponsors and so on. And he was given free reign to do that and to build the brand that he was rocking. Yeah. And that was how the concept should work and how it did work most effectively. Yeah. You know, Th- those who knew that like this is bigger, biggest platform you, you might see because it was shown on so many. Like I was watching it on Eurosport every Thursday or Wednesday. What was it? You know, I, I yeah. was 
turning it on and watching doesn't ma- it didn't matter what kind of match was there because I knew that Neil would put up the best matches on. And most of the times, yes. most of the matches were great. You know, so you end up even seeing your yourself pulling or for you, people who you like or you, doesn't matter. The 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 looking at like the whole conversation is we need armors back. <laughs> we need armors back. I, I I stopped to stopped um, the armors promotion where it was. I didn't. It's not gone. It, it was it was there in a situation where it was put on the shelf for very viable reasons in terms of WL came along. And WL had an opportunity to potentially create something bigger and more sustainable than Arm Wars was at that time because I didn't have the resource. The best way of doing it would have been if somebody had come along and said, okay, look, we're going to financially back you. We're going to support what you do financially, give you free reign to continue to run it, assist with that, but allow me to run the show and finance it. And had they done that, I still to this day believe that Arm Wars was and is the best concept in arm wrestling history. And I genuinely believe that to be the case. And I think that most high-level arm wrestlers that are have competed in Arm Wars, most would agree that that is the case. Yeah, because I was like, I was walking to my home to do the podcast, and I was thinking like, what is the best way to build the sport in my opinion like i said i don't believe just someone giving us money and having a match and everyone's looking at it. that that doesn't leave impact on the sport the sport is continuous returning for something and it yeah. should not be just one person two person it should be the whole whole thing so sometimes i will say not 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 all wl cards are very interesting to me because I'm very attached to some athletes, but not others, you know. Yes. Uh, not every PAL match is interesting to me because I know the difference on strength. But I, like I said, like every, every every day, every week I was turning on Eurosport and just looking at that. So bringing something like uh, Arm Wars back, giving ability to work together with athletes. They understand. So like... Uh, as an athlete, what what I like is to be paid for. If I win, I would I would if I would get paid, that would be awesome. Uh, my accommodations, that's awesome, and that's <laughs> kind of it. Everything else is kind of on you, you know. And if we give you more, then of course we give you more, you know. If you have, if you show more, we give you more, and that's always how it should be. It not should be like like you said, you invested so much in a match with uh, Devon and uh, and and. Uh, Travis. Uh, Travis and pff, flopped, you know? Yeah. And you're like, this is, you know, just ridiculous. I watched those videos after the last conversation because I haven't seen them. And I'm like, it's so, it's uh, it's just, you know, watching that. And and you had interest in, and everyone had interest in that. And then it just didn't deliver. And sometimes it happens, you know? But Yeah, uh, on the Sunday, I couldn't give a, I, w- I was sort of disinterested. I was, had almost given up on that show. I've taken such a financial impact on it, I couldn't give a shit, really. I was sort of like dis- disenchanted massively. It deflated me so bad on the Saturday. I'd seen so much money crash. And it was actually very beneficial in some ways because I learned a very, very harsh lesson that day. There's so many in life, and that was one of them, in terms of the, the best arm wrestlers sometimes do not deliver the best matches. The best characters uh, sometimes come with flaws. Uh, and you need to understand what each individual athlete is about. And some people get it and some people don't. And some people work with it and work towards an end and some people don't. It's knowing the devil with whom you dance. Yeah. You know? It's like, what I really love what UFC is doing and how Dana White, he could be... Uh, Hated, love, doesn't matter. But he's like, if if it's a bad night, he will come out on press conference. He like said, well, that match was shit. You know, this guy will get fired. You know, and it gives more on everything. And sometimes athletes need that kicking. You know, you're like, mm-hmm. you, you, you like you didn't deliver. You just dis- did the same thing six rounds. You didn't show your table like you anything. You know. And and that's what sometimes is needed. And we're sometimes like we're kind of yeah, you, we're just not gonna talk about it. No, no, everyone's already feeling bad. 
sometimes we need to talk about it. Yeah, I, I you know, oh, people, the, the issue you've got with that, people will take a topic and twist it. They'll take something, that, they'll take reality and twist it a little bit and try and throw it out there like it's something different. I've seen that. So, I mean, Travis is a master Tra- of that. Tra- Travis said, a master like, of, okay, I'll say that, something. That's my reality. Which is like based in truth, but 99% very loosely. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, that's that. But with arm wrestling success going forward, there has to be a degree of truth in the match. There has to be a situation where people are invested in characters. And all those things have got to come together. There's got to be a meeting of strands. And, it, and how we get there, we shall see. But one thing is for sure, at this point in time, we've got a match happening between two guys that genuinely are interesting to the public. And the wider public, bigger than arm wrestling. That's clear, you know. It's a great shame that it didn't happen between Levan and Mike initially. That would have been interesting. But we talked about it on the last show. And we said, if that match doesn't come about, one really viable proposition would be Devon Larratt, Michael Todd, just because of the fact that it's usually a great match. And from a social media perspective, there's a hell of a lot of interest in it. You know? Now, how big can we make it? Is the thing. Well, the, the, the how big we can make it is, <laughs> I like to, I like to look at things from a mathematical perspective in terms of the marketing revenue that the world spends on, on everything. Um, and our, and our sport, although it may not be as legitimate <laughs> as the UFC or a strongman or, or whatever, um, it's still, it still, at the end of the day, generates a certain amount of attention. And, mm-hmm. and like, for instance, a hundred thousand dollars, you want a hundred thousand dollars from a third party sponsor to, to, to deliver a hundred thousand dollars worth of, uh, comparable value to what that hundred thousand dollars could buy somewhere else. That's worth about 33 million views on YouTube with a pre-roll ad at the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's how many views a company could buy with a hundred thousand dollars. So it's very black and white when you look at it that way and you say, okay, we have to deliver this company more than that if we want to have them walk away feeling good about this. So every time we, we you, you, you promote, whether it's an individual athlete, whether it's an event, whether it's a, a, a PAL, WAL, I think it, it, it pays to realize that we actually do have an ability to deliver value and, and, and use the same calculations that that everyone else is, or that the market already determines, and and we'll get there. Um, so yeah, it's. I think that, I think that there's more value in the sport than a lot of us even believe. A lot of the individual athletes, uh, I don't think, realize how much value there is, and and um, I think we get there. And I think this match, Michael and Devon, um, I think I think it's going to be, I think it's going to generate half a million dollars worth of value. It just can. Can we uh, can we seize that value and and have someone else see see it uh, see it believe it and agree it and be happy to pay for it? So I don't know what the number is on the event, but I think it's it's going to be big. Well, I think I think it's interesting you make a comparison between strongman. Yeah, UFC is one thing, um, but when you said you know maybe not as big as the USC, maybe not as big as strongman. UFC is one thing, but strongman. I genuinely believe that arm wrestling can be at least as big as. Mm. There's there's possibly more of a crossover than strongman, arguably more, because it's very very fast paced. In the modern digital era, fast paced sport like that has a lot of opportunity. You know, the characters is key. But you think about the depth of competitor in strongman versus the depth of competitor in arm wrestling. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. We're going to leave you all on this pause. On yeah, this pause. That, what, what yeah. about that, eh? Was that a <laughs> for you? Uh, Technical director saving it there. That's yeah. awkward time. He came, came to. We were just building up for a very dramatic close to this particular episode of The Fix, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to say that it was brought to you by the greatest beef jerky in the world. Yes! Western Survivor, ladies and gents. You know it. 
Links yeah. in the description. For me, and, for me and Ryan, the borders are closed, I guess. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Joking aside, who are the borders everywhere? Can you guys actually fly and travel and stuff? I can travel. Yeah. I what can leave, you? but it's, yeah, I can leave, but it's not certain that I can get back. I have free room, so. <laughs> and what about you, Paul? I mean, internally, I haven't really looked at anything international, so I don't know. But I've traveled for work a couple times here. So anybody out of vaccine yet? No. No, me neither. No. Never mind, lads. Hopefully, by the end of 2021, we can move past this stuff and get some arm wrestling done. And it's nice to see that around the world, the cogs are starting to turn and the big matches are starting to fall in place. Who knows? We're going to get a brew just before we start to record the next episode. And hopefully, in that time, Engen and Devon may have patched it up and we'll have a lot more to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time here on The Fix, please like, share, subscribe, have a tattoo on your floppy dog. Or anything else you want to do to endorse what we do here. Before we go, I want to say an enormous thank you to King of Cats, Ray, Roly Royce, Flapping. <laughs> Coming live and direct from that he was, he's just vanished into thin air. Yes. <laughs> Bit of magic at the end of the fix. We want to keep it varied. And as he reaches for the pussy, <laughs> Roly Royce about to sign off. As he reaches for the pussy, he gets the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> or so he wishes. <laughs> Mate, it's been a boring show without a cattail hard on. Usually we get a bit of that. That's not, don't we? not today, mate. No, there it is. Yes, over in America, ladies and gentlemen, that's the home of the White Oak, Mr. Paul Lynn. And last but by no means least, friend of people, Ryan Blue Boy. The <laughs> friend of people, Sergeant. Friend. Friend of people. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, until we see you next time here on The Fix, take it easy, peeps. What grabs your eyes on that, if anything?